Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. On Indian PM Modi interacts with exam warriors, says shortcuts will cut you short. Pakistan hopeful of IMF agreement this month, says PM Shehbaz Sharif. And families in Afghanistan struggle to keep warm as cold weather kills over 160. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday interacted with students, teachers and parents as part of annual event Pariksha Pe Charcha addressing the gathering. Modi shared exam mantras and answered queries of students over topics like exam stress, time management and accepting criticism. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacted with students, teachers and parents on Friday as part of annual Pariksha Pe Charcha event in Indian capital New Delhi, sharing his tips on handling exam stress and other issues. Responding to questions raised on exam malpractice, the PM pointed out the negative change in the morals where a student takes pride in fooling the supervisor while cheating in an exam. Terming the practice as a dangerous trend, he said life cannot be successful with cheating. You may clear an exam or two, but it will remain questionable in life, he added. Talking about time management, he said students can understand the significance of micromanagement of time by observing their mothers who perform every chore in a timely manner. लेकिन वो कभी भी आपकी जिंदगी की रुकावट नहीं बन पाएगा आपके भीतर की जो ताकत है आपके भीतर की जो ताकत है वही ताकत आपको आगे ले जाएगी Students said the Prime Minister addressing the issue of exam stress is a very big thing for them. They said, though the questions were very generic, he gave answers with specific examples which will help them. It was very good. The question students asked was actually relatable. The Prime Minister answered that we can use it in our real life and implement it. The annual event Pariksha Pe Charcha has been held every year since 2018 where the Prime Minister interacts with students, parents and teachers from across the country. Moving on, India has sent a notice to Pakistan calling for an amendment of the Indus Waters Treaty even as the dispute resolution mechanism of the treaty remains in a logjam for five years. India has blamed Pakistan of intransigence on the treaty's implementation, media reports suggested. India and Pakistan signed the Indus Waters Treaty in 1960 with the World Bank as a signatory of the pact. The treaty sets out a mechanism for cooperation and information exchange regarding the use of waters of a number of rivers. Pakistan had in 2015 sought the appointment of a neutral expert to its technical objections to Indian hydroelectric projects. The very next year, Islamabad retracted the request and sought a court of arbitration to adjudicate its objections. This unilateral action was in contravention of the graded mechanism of dispute settlement. The initiation of two simultaneous processes on the same issue essentially creates a legal issue. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Friday said he is hopeful about the agreement on the ninth review with the IMF by the end of January. With soaring inflation and foreign reserves barely sufficient to cover three weeks of imports, the South Asian nation is in dire need of external financing. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabaz Sharif on Friday said he is hopeful of his country striking an agreement over the ninth review of International Monetary Fund's bailout program, which has remained stalled. 
Sharif at an event in Islamabad questioned how long can Pakistan rely on others to run its matters. The journey is difficult but not impossible, he added. The Premier said that considering the dire situation of the foreign exchange reserves, the government has developed a list including food and medical items that need to be imported based on their necessity. Inshallah, IMF se isi mahine mein, uh, Inshallah, mujhe puri umid hai ke mawaida ho jayega aur ye mushkilat se hum bahar niklayenge, phir multilateral aur bilateral bhi jo idare hain, wo hamare saath chalenge. This comes as IMF's resident representative in Pakistan, Esther Perez Royce, on Thursday said an IMF delegation will be in the country from January 31st to February 9th. The announcement came after US ambassador to Pakistan, Donald Bloom, called on PM Sharif with the latter thanking US for supporting Pakistan's post-flood reconstruction and rehabilitation efforts. The IMF and Pakistan signed a six billion US dollars bailout in 2019 that was topped up with another 1.1 billion US dollars last year. However, the release of fund has remained deferred for final approval since September 2022. With interest rates already at 17 percent, inflation hitting 24.5 percent in December, and foreign reserves barely sufficient to cover three weeks of imports, the South Asian nation is in dire need of external financing. More on news from Pakistan. An Islamabad court on Friday sent senior PTI leader Fawad Chaudhry to a 14-day judicial remand in a sedition case for allegedly inciting violence against the election commission. The court on Wednesday night had granted police an initial two-day physical remand of Chaudhry hours after he was arrested. An Islamabad district and sessions court on Friday sent senior PTI leader Fawad Chaudhry to Adiala jail on a 14-day judicial remand in a sedition case. On charges, he incited violence against the poll body, a constitutional institution. The court on Wednesday night had granted police an initial two-day physical remand of Fawad, hours after he was arrested. The former information minister was taken into custody after a first information report against him was registered in Islamabad by an official of the Election Commission of Pakistan for threatening the poll body's members and their families. The ECP lawyer said the poll body's employees were told that they do the work of a clerk and were threatened that PTI supporters will reach their homes. At this, Fawad's counsel, Babar Awan, accused the Election Commission of colluding with the government against PTI. Separately, a bail application was also filed by Fawad on Friday, which was adjourned till Saturday. Moving on, activist Hakim Baloch has raised concern over the growing footprints of China in the Balochistan region and said the China-Pakistan economic corridor has been a disaster for the indigenous people, contrary to claims of its being a game changer. He blamed China as equally responsible in subjugation of Baloch people along with Pakistan. Prominent member of the Baloch National Movement, Hakim Baloch has raised concern over the growing footprints of China in the Balochistan region, as he termed the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor a disaster for the indigenous people, contrary to claims of being a game-changer project. The activist said pro-independence parties have since day one highlighted the so-called developmental projects are there to subjugate people of Balochistan. There has been a growing resistance as sea remains a major source of livelihood for locals, but it is being snatched from them due to presence of Chinese trawlers involved in illegal fishing, which are plundering the region's natural resources. Sea is the only mean of uh, income in Gwadar, Balochistan, but they are forced to uh, forced to not to go to the sea because of the China-Pakistan economic corridor and because of that uh, the port and because of the presence of the Chinese in that region. And many times the Pakistani uh, establishment, uh, the so-called uh, representative of Balochistan government and the uh, representative of Pakistani military have mentioned that, that they want 
tolerate anyone to uh, you know uh, put any kind of hurdle or obstacle in the way of the uh, Chinese so they are more concerned to please the Chinese than the uh, than than the uh, you know the livelihood of the locals activists have long blamed the multi billion dollar project has only brought death and destruction for the indigenous people instead of economic opportunities as pakistani forces operate with impunity in the region to ensure safe passage to beijing in news from afghanistan more than 160 people have died this month in afghanistan during the country's worst winter in more than a decade authorities said on thursday as residents described being unable to afford fuel to heat their homes in temperatures well below freezing a report In the worst winter in more than a decade, more than 160 people have died in Afghanistan. Authorities said on Thursday as residents complained they are unable to afford fuel to heat homes in freezing temperatures. In a snowy field in the west of the Afghan capital Kabul, children rummaged through rubbish looking for plastic to burn as their families could not afford wood or coal condition of a shopkeeper ashour ali who lives with his family of five children in a concrete basement is in different the weather is so cold and i cannot buy coal he said adding the small amount he earns from his shop was no longer enough for fuel or food akhunna kas ke moy amim sal bawar ke zogal kharida na tanistim subah ki namaz me khonim मेरे मम्मी जी इतने जरा सोखते कि चाम कदम आ रहे हैं इन दिनों वाज़ याद रहते हैं इन वायलों में बेचारों गुशना तुशना या ग्रह गए एक बुजुर्ग वाला पैदा करने में पैसे जरा बहुत दया गाफ़तों ने हमें चलाना The coldest winter in 15 years, which has seen temperatures dip as low as minus 34 degrees Celsius, has hit Afghanistan in the middle of a severe economic crisis. You are not a psycho. तो सुबह ही आ गया तो हो दिन का टाइम पार ना मिशे या रोत के एक पार ना मिशे तो सुबह चिख मिजाने की वो मोर या खजात की तेज़ हो दूँ तेज़ हम अमरीश हो दें। UN aid chief Martin Griffiths, who recently visited Kabul, also noted that six million people were knocking on famine's door during the winter. He urged Taliban administration to ease restrictions on women NGOs workers. Several aid groups have suspended operation in recent weeks due to a Taliban ban on female NGO workers leaving agencies unable to operate programs in the conservative country. 50-year-old Masarat Maqbool from India's Jammu and Kashmir along with her husband is trying hard to keep the dying art of paper mache alive while also breaking the gender stereotypes around it. She has earned a name for herself in this male dominated art by earning several awards. Take a look. With the advent of new technologies and manufacturing techniques, the traditional art of paper mache in India's Jammu and Kashmir is on the verge of decline. 50-year-old Masrat Maqbool from Srinagar is trying hard to keep the dying art alive while also breaking the gender stereotypes around it. She has earned a name for herself in this male dominant art by earning several awards. 2011 mein maine ek bawal banayi thi wo maine state award mein bhar diya aur mujhe ek award mil gaya 2011 mein aur fir maine jewelry da banaya aur 2012 mein usse usko bhi mujhe award mil gaya aur fir maine ek wall hangi banayi aur 2016 mein उसे अवार्ड मिल गया तीन अवार्ड है मुझे मसरत हजबेंड मोहम्मद मकबूल जान इज ऑल्सो अ पेपर मैशे आर्टिस्ट एंड वॉन्ट्स लोकल्स टू एम्ब्रेस द एंशियंट आर्ट एंड कीप इट अलाइव पेपर मैशे इन्वॉल्व मेकिंग डिफरेंट शेप्स लाइक वेसेस ट्रेस बॉक्सेस एंड एनिमल शेप्स विद इंट्रिकेट पेंटिंग ऑफ मल्टीपल शेड्स बाकुल लोगों को भी कहना चाहता हूँ अपनी जो फैमिली है उनमें ये आर्ट शामिल करो जो हम अपनी मिसिज है वो उसको भी शामिल करो उनको सपोर्ट दीजिए जो जिस तरीके से हम घर के सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं उस तरीके से हम हनर के उसके थ्रू उनको सपोर्ट करेंगे द आर्ट ऑफ पेपर मैशी वॉज हाईली फेवर्ड बाई मुगल एम्प्रेस ऑफ फिफ्टीन एंड सिक्सटीन सेंचुरी द यूनिक क्राफ्ट इन्वॉल्व द यूज ऑफ पेपर पल्प ओवर मोल्ड विच इज दैन ड्राइड पॉलिश 
and finally painted to create artifacts of lifelike images of kingfishers, maple leaves and other motifs. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.